You're watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. Every parent wants their child to have a better life than they did, but that will be tough for current college graduates who will leave school with diplomas and debt. Good evening, I'm Ashley Katz. And I am David Oliver. Good to have you along tonight. New at 10, Kevin Schwaller is live to show the average debt from student loans. Yeah, and when it comes to credit debt, credit.com puts that debt at more than $3,000 for the average undergrad. Now, we heard from a speaker today, Rachel Cruz. She's the daughter of Dave Ramsey. Some have called him a financial guru. Now, the organizers of this event today at Missouri State had an old trick, one where you put your credit card in a baggie like this, fill it with water, and then literally freeze your debt by putting it in the freezer was kind of in the back of my mind. It's that feeling of uncertainty from something Missouri State student Matt Wilkes says seems to be a certain part of going to college these days. You have to take out of school and go to school now, pretty much, so it feels like. Wilkes will graduate with more than $20,000 in student loans, but does not have credit card debt. It's not a good idea to pay off credit cards with other credit cards. He says he learned what not to do from those around him. This generation has their iPhones out. They can get whatever they want, whenever they want it, any kind of information, anything. So that goes into their purchasing. In Instant reward. Financial speaker Rachel Cruz has advice that sounds simple. That's one of my main battle cries for this generation is to get out of student loan debt, get out of credit card debt, drive a car you can afford, and also to get on a budget, to tell your money what to do. Cruz says simply don't buy it if you don't have the money. This brings up like, what can I do daily? You can still get your coffee. Crew says you just have to make sure you budget for these kinds of expenses. Unfortunately, I think their mindsets are kind of stuck right now. Student April Weiss works with Enactus. That's the group that put on this event. I think going forward, all we can do is promote and, and give knowledge and, and really help students know how to change and break the habit. Their recent experience is living in the now and getting by in the Great Recession. Now will that carry with students or just become another thought? in the back of their minds. Now the idea behind this freezer trick here is that you have your card in a block of ice and that literally buys you some time here because you have to either wait for this to thaw or chip away at the ice. Putting it in a microwave could damage the card. That way you get to think about those big purchases a little bit more. Interesting idea there, Kevin. Thanks. Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is now at a record high. It passed the 14,198 mark after the opening bell, breaking the record set back in October 2007. It closed even higher. Reasons for the rally include China's plans to spend more to grow its economy, and retail sales jumped in Europe and in the U.S. Corporate earnings have been strong, and companies are now hiring once again. Jamie Warner is in the weather lab tonight, tracking colder temperatures in the Ozarks. Jamie. That's right. Uh, temperatures are colder. They've been colder all day long versus yesterday. Yesterday, 64 for the high. Today, a high of only 41 this afternoon. But at least we had the sunshine, at least in most areas. Clouds did wrap around, though, in areas like Lake Ozark, Fort Leonard Wood, and Rolla, where we have cloudy skies right now. And it's going to take a little while to get these clouds out of locations north and east of Springfield. At least the winds are starting to die down. They howled earlier today, approaching 40 miles per hour in most locations and in a few spots actually exceeding 40 miles per hour. I saw a peak wind gust in West Plains up to 43 miles per hour, but again right now in that 10 mile per hour range. Uh, temperatures below freezing, currently 30 in Springfield and with I think generally clear skies and lighter winds, temperatures will drop to about 22 to start off the day on Wednesday. We will find sunshine though all day long and with lighter winds and highs in the low 40s, not a bad day. What would make it even better is warmer weather. We'll find that on Thursday and Friday. Thanks, Jamie. Springfield police and firefighters are trying to solve the mystery of a man's death and a home that burned. The fire started about 3.30 this morning on 30 East Elm. Responders found a man inside that was dead, but investigators say the victim had injuries in addition to those caused by the fire. Security guard Carl Templeton was making his rounds early this morning when he smelled smoke, tried to wake up the people inside and called 911. As I came around on the side street, the garage burst into flames. The whole thing went up in almost instantaneous. I beat on the doors, but I couldn't get anybody to come to the door. There was a series of small explosions. I figured gas or paint or something like that. To an extra fire upon arrival, they actually found the fire was also inside the house. When they got inside, they found things that concerned them. 
One neighbor said he likely will not sleep easy tonight because this fire has been ruled suspicious. Police have not released the names of the victim. A notorious fugitive arrested here in the Ozarks will now spend five years locked up in the United Kingdom. Eddie Maher, known as Fast Eddie, was sentenced after pleading guilty to a bank heist. Maher had been on the run for almost 20 years. Federal marshals caught up with Maher last year in Ozark after his daughter-in-law called to report him. Maher was working as a cable television installer and living in this rented house. He stole one and a half million dollars but told authorities he spent it all during his time on the run. Venezuela's president Hugo Chavez is dead at the age of 58. He had been diagnosed with cancer in 2011. Chavez was one of Latin America's most controversial leaders. He was Venezuela's president for more than a decade and was a firm believer in socialist government. Chavez believed the U.S. government secretly backed a coup to remove him from power and repeatedly threatened to stop supplying the U.S. with oil. Back here at home, a Springfield car dealer is accused tonight of lying about the mileage on used cars. Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster filed charges against Ashley Bolton, the owner of Excel Auto Group. The Attorney General claims Bolton sold one car that had 180,000 miles on it but told the customer it only had 99,000. Also, in a separate case, the AG alleges that Bolton told the customer that a car had only 119,000 miles when it actually had 220,000 miles. And Springfield Police tonight have released the name of a man killed at the All Metal Recycling Center yesterday. They say 35-year-old Jason Lee Taylor was run over by some heavy equipment. OSHA is now investigating. The agency says it has no report of any prior reports at this business. New at 10, a group in the Ozarks calls gun control legislation unconstitutional and unbiblical. The Ozarks Property Rights Associ Coalition has hosted the Firearms Freedom Symposium tonight. It was at the Remington's Event Center in Springfield. The executive director of Gun Owners of America, a firearms instructor, and a preacher all gave presentations. Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder signed up last minute to speak. He was there touting a lawsuit filed yesterday against a license office in southeast Missouri. He says it's scanning information of concealed carry permit applicants which violates Missouri law. People are uh, very concerned about the privacy issues here and the violation of privacy uh, and the transmission of sensitive information that there's no legal right to transmit. A temporary restraining order against that license office was filed yesterday. A hearing is set for a week from today. New at 10 tonight, Springfield's director of the Office of Emergency Management will now lead the entire state. The state emergency management agency chose Ryan Nichols as its new director. Nichols, of course, spent seven years as the director here in Springfield in Greene County. He also served on disaster management teams responding to the Joplin tornado in 2011 and super Storm Sandy in 2012. And tornado sirens sounded all across Missouri today, part of a statewide drill. Right here you see Bingham Elementary took part in that drill here in Springfield. Students practice going to their safe zones. Those are typically hallways where there are not any exterior windows or walls. Now according to the principal here, these drills are a perfect time to work out the kinks. I thought it went really well. We had a couple classes we couldn't find quite the quite the correct spot, but we visit with it afterwards and we'll get it fixed next time. Local businesses also took part in that drill, which again happened at 1.30 this afternoon. In tonight's medical coverage, confirmed cases of the flu are down by half in Greene County. The health department says last week there were 20 cases. For the entire season, nearly 1,400 people went to doctors for treatment. The Centers for Disease Control now says Missouri has regional flu activity. Previously, it had been widespread. The Regional Mother's Milk Depot is now open for women and their newborns. It allows mothers to receive breast milk or donate to moms in need. Organizers say mother's milk is, important, is an important part of early development. Breast milk actually conveys lifelong um, health benefits. We see decreases in rates of eczema, of asthma. We see decrease in rates of diabetes, obesity, not just in children, but also into adulthood. 
By the way, each donor must go through health screenings. Now to our political coverage here at Tim tonight. Missouri's unemployment rate is the lowest it's been now since September of 2008. The Department of Economic Development says in January the state unemployment rate was 6.5 percent. That's down one-tenth of a point from December. The national unemployment rate for January was 7.9 percent. Well, tomorrow is the deadline to register for Missouri's municipal elections in April. Voters in dozens of cities, towns, and school districts will decide several issues. You can register at many public schools, colleges, libraries, and your county clerk's office. A Springfield property owner must appear in court after being accused of not cleaning up a vacant lot filled with trash. The city subpoenaed Eli Avila Velasquez about this mess on the corner of Grand and Western. Neighbors have been complaining for months. The hearing date has not been set. A local hospital changes the way it treats newborns and their mothers. Yeah, the families will soon spend more time together. And we won't do anything at all that will separate them during that first hour of life. In our Family Matters report tonight, two benefits of this new policy. If you haven't already found Color 10 on Facebook, it's easy to do. Look for the Facebook icon on OzarksFirst.com and like our page. Tonight's Family Matters report here at 10. More than 3,000 babies are born every year at Mercy Hospital in Springfield. And those born later this month will spend more time with their families in the first few hours of life. Color 10, Shannon Miller explains why. Right after her seven pound bundle of joy was born. He just instantly got to hear me and, and feel me and smell me. Christina said second child was right where she wanted him. They just instantly gave him to me and let me hold him and kind of rub him and stuff. It's special time all mothers who give birth at Mercy Hospital will soon spend in the first few hours of their infant's lives. As soon as the baby's born, the baby is laid right on the mother's chest. There's no blanket or anything that separates them. According to Cindy Witten with Mercy, the skin-to-skin -skin contact promotes breastfeeding and bonding between mom and baby. We won't do anything at all that will separate them during that first hour. From here on out, the only time babies will be rolled in here to the nursery is if they need any sort of simple procedure after birth. Even after infants are away, they return right back to the rooms they came from. 
spending the nights next to mom instead of the nursery. I think because he can hear me all the time and he's just in here, he's comfortable sleeping in his bassinet. He doesn't need to be held all the time. The rooming in change is part of the hospital's transition to family-centered maternity care that promotes constant contact between newborns and families. I wouldn't have it any other way. For moms like Christina, it's care she says will prepare her for motherhood outside the hospital. In Springfield, Shannon Miller, Color 10 News. And so you know the hospital's change for maternity care will take effect in about two weeks. It'll include couple, couple care, which means mom and baby will be treated by the same nurse. And here is Jamie again with another check of the forecast changes coming, I guess, tomorrow, Jamie. Well, to starting tomorrow, we'll start seeing a weather heading back to where we want it to be, and that is with sunshine and warmer weather, right? Well, we're going to find that certainly later on this week, but we've got to get through some cold weather tonight and kind of a chilly forecast for tomorrow as well. It's all in your full forecast coming up. Now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. All right, that wind's been whistling through the tree branches all day long. Still kind of high even this evening, although the winds are starting to die down a little bit. Skies are mostly clear and temperatures are cold. 30 degrees right now in Springfield. Winds out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour. Why the wind? It's this storm right here in the Ohio Valley, the center of it located right about in there, at least the surface low. And what will happen is we'll see sort of a transfer of energy as, as we're going to find another area of low pressure developing right about in here. That one will take over and then move up the coast off uh, the coastline of the uh, eastern U.S. and generate heavy snows for this part of the middle Atlantic states where some areas may pick up as much as a foot of snowfall. For us, well, our snow chances are over with. We did have a few flurries earlier today in areas 
in and around Rolla, although I never saw any official reports in the Rolla area of snow flurries, but radar was certainly picking it up. Right now we're just picking up some clouds across those areas, and those clouds look like they may be rather stubborn. They don't want to leave. I think it will take much of the rest of the night to finally get those clouds to move out of the area from west to east, areas uh, from uh, say Neosho, southeast down through West Plains, south of that line will stay clear, but northeast of that line, we will continue to find mostly cloudy skies for the next several hours. Should start tomorrow off, though, with most of the cloud cover out, and it looks like a beautiful sunny day across the region, with a few high clouds coming in towards the end of the day across southwest Missouri and northwest Arkansas. Otherwise, again, a gorgeous day, a little on the cold side, highs only in the low 40s. But with sunshine and light winds, it's still going to feel pretty good out there. And we're going to hold on to that sunshine Thursday and Friday. And as the next storm begins to develop in eastern Colorado, winds become southerly and temperatures get a lot warmer. Mid-50s on Thursday and highs in the low to mid-60s, I think, on Friday. That next storm will come through the area this weekend. Saturday looks like a mostly cloudy but mainly dry day. Look for rain to increase though from west to east late Saturday night. That'll carry over into Sunday as a band of rain and embedded thunderstorms moves across the area. Some of the rainfall could be heavy and it looks like we could see uh, as much as maybe an inch of rainfall at least in a few spots and another round of heavy snows for parts of Kansas through northwest Missouri and the south central areas of Iowa. Following that storm another shot of cold and it looks like with the cold Old. on Monday we could find clouds, gusty winds, and maybe the chance for a few more snow flurries at least Monday morning. This will be a quick shot and it looks like temperatures will try to warm back up again uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday. Overnight tonight, uh, again, we've got some clouds out there, mainly north and east of Springfield. Those will gradually give way to clear skies as we head towards sunrise. A low of 22 tonight here in Springfield, maybe a bit warmer to our northeast just because of that lingering cloud cover. For tomorrow, a sunny day, 42, and much lighter winds out of the north at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Areas to our south warmer than here in Springfield and points north, mid 40s in Harrison tomorrow afternoon. Good looking forecast for Thursday, Friday. Not bad on Saturday, although rather cloudy. I still think we'll get a little sun. Highs in the low 60s. Sunday, a good chance for showers and thunder, especially uh, during the morning into the early afternoon. A high of 57. That flurry risk Monday morning and another round of cold, a high of only 43. A lot of different weather patterns on that seven days. Just in the you last bet. 24 hours, we had sunshine, warm weather yesterday. We had rain to snow last night and blustery winds and cold temperatures today. My goodness. Busy, busy. Yes. Thanks, Jamie. You bet. Well, the Mizzou Tigers took out some frustration on Arkansas tonight. Dan's got that, plus Evangel playing for a tournament championship. It's all next.
now, the Chevy Dealer Sports Report with Dan Lucy. The 10 and 21 Missouri State Bears will leave for St. Louis tomorrow in the Valley Postseason Tournament. Despite the struggles, Missouri State picked up a few postseason honors today, including Freshman of the Year. That going to freshman guard Marcus Marshall. From St. Paul, Minnesota, Marshall is averaging nearly 11 points a game for the Bears. He is 21 points shy of breaking Blake Ahern's Bears record for scoring by a freshman. And Marshall joins Ahern as the only Missouri State Bears to win the Valley's Freshman of the Year. Without you know, coaches, my teammates, they really, they really kept me humble. They really kept my head up. I mean, it really gave me confidence to go out there and just play my game night in and night out. And I wanted to help the team win some Valley games. And we came in 2-10 and 10 without a Division one win. So we really wanted to change that. So I just came out there and I fought and did whatever the coaches wanted me to do. And he's had so much responsibility on him from day one. And uh, he's done a very nice job of just being very consistent. And any time... Uh, that he did hit some rough patches in the road. He responded uh, with big nights. The Bears also picked up another Valley postseason honor today. Missouri State senior Anthony Downing was named honorable mention All-Valley. He started all 31 games for the Bears, led the team in scoring nearly 14 points a game. The Atchison, Kansas native collected 35 steals and averaged four and a half rebounds a game. It was senior night at Missouri Arena, but that was just the subplot to tonight's drama. The main course, Mike Anderson's return to Columbia two years after he left Missouri for Arkansas. Last home games for seniors Keon Bell, Alex Oriaki, and Lawrence Bowers. Bowers set the tone early with this follow-up dunk right here to make it 5 nothing Mizzou. Arkansas would keep pace early. Cody Clark, the jumper from the free throw line to make it 7-5 Razorbacks. But the rest of the night belonged to Mizzou. Phil Pressey with the deep three right here to make it 30-15 to Tigers and even Arkansas's Mike Anderson smiled at that. Into the half, Ernest Ross off balance three from the corner. 48-22 Mizzou at halftime. And the second half was a Tiger dunk show. First Bowers with the one-handed slam dunk there. And then the senior, Oriaki, with the flush. He had 10 points. And then Bowers again with a slam dunk. Lawrence Bowers, the senior, 24 points, 11 rebounds, and Mizzou wins 93-63. The Evangel Crusaders after revenge as well tonight on the hardwood. The Crusaders after the Heart of America Conference Tournament Championship. Evangel has lost only three conference games this year, two of them to Mid-America Nazarene. Evangel trying to win that sixth tournament championship against Mid-Am. And it was a war. Pioneers Luke Thomas working hard down low to the basket to make it 9-4, Mid-American Nazarene. Evangel gets back in, and Victor Agbazi with the three to make it a 9-9 game. And then the senior from Tulsa with the jumper from the free throw line, and we're tied at 11. Evangel attacking the boards all night. The first shot is long, but Stephen Cotton is there for the tip-in rebound. It was 16-15, Evangel. Then the handoff to Brody Winger for the long two. 19-17, Crusaders, Mid-America, not going away. Rustin Dow the three from the quarter, 25-23 Pioneers. But Evangel would answer with Parkview's Corey Tillery. One-on-one -on -one with Jacob French down low. Tillery wins, so does Evangel. Taking the tournament championship 88-81. After six seasons at Drury, Steve Harold resigned as the women's basketball coach today. The Lady Panthers 14 and 13 this year after losing in the opening round of the GLVC tournament. Harold was 129 and 52 with four GLVC West Division titles, one Conference Coach of the Year award. But this campaign was trying for Harold. Lady Panthers lost five of their first seven conference games. The veteran then was suspended for a game for conduct detrimental to the Drury Athletics program. Harold telling Color 10 Sports tonight that stepping down was his decision and he was just unhappy with the work environment at Drury and he knew it was time for a change. And finally tonight, college baseball, Oklahoma State beating Missouri State in Stillwater 5-4 on a 10th inning bases loaded walk. Bears will open the home season Friday at Hammonds Field if Jamie makes it warm enough. Let's yeah. Go. Pressure's on him. Yeah. It always we'll is. We'll have to see how that pans out. Thanks, Dan. Well, it is pretty and pretty big. The reason this nearly 30-foot icicle was removed.
Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. News will continue in a moment. Have you seen this three-story icicle? It had to be removed from a Canadian apartment complex. Firefighters say it posed a safety hazard to pedestrians in a neighboring building. Before it was gone, someone even created a giant icicle Twitter account. It even gained a few fans. Well, a lot of our icicles and snow, it's pretty much melted off by now. Just right? about, yeah, yeah. especially with yesterday's warmth. Cold tomorrow, but the warmth will return later this week. Thanks, Jamie. And thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Good night.